Welcome to Dr. BT's Chemistry Essentials, A-Level Chemistry Made Easy. In this video we're going to be looking at infrared spectroscopy which comes up in both year one and year two settings when looking at trying to elucidate or deduce the structure of an organic compound. We're going to have a quick look at basically some of the theory behind how infrared radiation causes spectroscopic data. Then we're going to look at some characteristic stretches and the bonds that they are produced by. And then we're going to apply that in a setting where you're going to use that data to deduce what functional group is there. So infrared spectroscopy starts by taking a sample and putting it into an infrared spectrometer. Within this spectrometer, infrared radiation is absorbed by the compound. Example here, if our sample is this ester, what would happen is the machine would irradiate the sample with infrared radiation and different bonds will absorb different frequencies of this infrared radiation. And on absorbing this infrared radiation, what actually happens is the bonds will either stretch or bend. For example here, if we take this carbonyl, C double bond O, as it absorbs the infrared radiation, what actually happens is this carbonyl bond is not static, it is moving and it stretches outwards and inwards. See this manifest itself as something that we can use as organic chemists in the spectra. So here, this peak here is an absorption peak or a C double bond O stretch. We know it's absorption of this area because the y-axis if you look here is actually transmittance so 100% transmittance means 0% absorption vice versa 0% transmittance so when we're looking down here is 100% absorption so the fact that this c double bond o stretch stretches quite close to zero shows that we get an absorption of infrared radiation around this region here in order to allow for a stretch of this carbonyl functional group or the bonds that are there. Something really worth picking up on. We know that bonds stretch and bend at certain frequencies or wave numbers. Now, just a moment here. Wave number is actually one over wavelength, but you don't need to know this. You just need to know characteristically where on this set of values between 500 and 4000 the different stretches form. Now, the idea that chemical bonds absorb the energy from infrared radiation, causing the bonds to vibrate and then producing a trace on a spectrum is really key in order for us to use as scientists. Firstly, OH bonds absorb in a specific region of the IR, and that's around here. We'll look at this in more specific detail later. But OH hydroxyl groups are found in ethanol. So breathalyzers work by measuring the amount of infrared radiation that is absorbed by OH. And that is linked into the concentration of ethanol that's in the bloodstream. So the bigger the peak that you see for the OH stretch, the more alcohol that is in your suspect's bloodstream. So infrared spectrometry can be used in criminal cases for that. It's also an issue. Absorption of infrared radiation by chemical bonds, causing them to vibrate, and vibration is therefore heat, is the exact reason why we have global warming. What happens is radiation that is absorbed by the Earth's surface is then re-emitted, and then that hits a blanket of basically greenhouse causing gases and these are gases like methane, carbon dioxide and water and it's the bonds within these gases that absorb the infrared radiation on this re-emission and then what they do is they vibrate and then release infrared radiation back in down to earth therefore the heat of the earth keeps increasing. Now we need to be able to look and understand how to interpret one of these spectra okay so one important part is that we have a part of the spectrum where it's too complex. We call this the fingerprint region. Fingerprint region contains 
all manner of different bends in different bonds of the molecule. And we can't unpick specific functional groups here. So we ignore this region from 1500 to about 500 in terms of centimeter one, so the wave number. So our focus is going to be focusing on this area where we can distinctly pull out different stretches in the spectra and then assign them for certain functional groups. Now in the exam, you don't need to remember the different areas around here. What you're given is a table like this, and this is found on your data sheet. Table given is actually a bit too complicated for A level. And so we need to be able to focus in on this key bond stretches and the key wave numbers. So the green stretches here are the key stretches that you are going to be using from the data sheet. And this data sheet here is OCRA, but all the exam boards are very similar. So just pick out the alkene, the carbonyl, which could be any form of those carbonyls listed, the carboxylic acid and the alcohols and phenols OH. They're the real key ones to know and use. The next important ones are those in yellow. They are uncommon, but they are can come up and are useful to know. The other ones are very rare, um, but obviously you're given the data sheet, so if you find a peak around here, you can sometimes assign it if you're certain. So let's see how these visibly look on a spectrum. First of all, let's look at alkenes. So given that our wave number is around 1620 to 1680, we're going to be looking at around here on our spectra. And what you're expecting to see here is a sharp peak. So in terms of a infrared where nothing was to absorb, you would expect to see a line like this. 100% of the IR signal is transmitted through the sample. But if we add an alkene in there, we're going to see a sharp peak appear at 1620 to 1680. And this varies depending on what is in the molecule and the influences around it. Now, obviously, this is very simplistic because there will be other bonds and stretches, especially in the fingerprint region. But at the moment, we're just focusing on these key signals. The next one is the carbonyl signal. This signal happens at 1630 to 1820, so quite a broad range, but this is a very sharp, strong signal. You can see, we mean strong because it is a lot more absorption, so it's closer to zero in terms of its transmission. Now, although it is very close to the C11C, it is the height of this peak that gives it away, and it is stronger, so you're going to see a bigger width as well. This one we're going to focus on our carboxylic acids. Now these come between 2500, 3300, and they're very broad. So what we mean by broad is the opposite of sharp. It's really key to stop for a moment and think, with a carboxylic acid, when you draw the functionality for this out, you have two types of bonds in here. First of all, you have the carbonyl, and then you have this OH. So you're expected... See a stretch for the carbonyl, then a stretch for the OH of the acid. Unless you see both these signals, you haven't got a carboxylic acid. And it can help decide when you've got a carbonyl, narrow down the options of carbonyl containing compounds. Without this carboxylic acid OH stretch, you can cross off that you've got carboxylic acid in this list here. So it will help you in terms of pulling this information together. Now the other major peak that you're looking for is the OH of an alcohol or a phenol. Now this is less broad and comes at 3200 to 3600. Because both the OH of the alcohol and phenol and the OH of the acid are both broad, even though the acid is more broad, what is worth always checking is if you're uncertain whether or not you have an OH of an alcohol phenol or an OH of an acid, remember, an OH of a carboxylic acid must come with a carbonyl stretch as well. So these are the four stretches that you really need to be able to identify with ease. That's going to really help you in the exam. There are three other stretches that are worth also being able to identify. Firstly, if you've got CO of an alcohol, ester, or carboxylic acid, this does come within the fingerprint region, 
And these do appear as two sharp signals around this region. So it's quite easy to pick out from the rest of the fingerprint. It would be particularly helpful if you've got a carbonyl peak because CO will only occur in carbonyl containing esters and carboxyl acids and won't appear if you had an aldehyde or a ketone. The other peak that is worth knowing about, although not very useful normally because most organic compounds have CHs in, but is this peak at 2850 to 3100. And here you can see it's quite a sharp peak, much similar to the CO peak here. Um, often, if you've got an acid in the molecule, these two basically constructively combine, so you get a bit more of a mess for the acid. Um, but if you have an alcohol in the molecule, however, they are two distinct areas, and you'll notice that your CH and your OH are separate but joined together. The final one that we've highlighted is amines and amides, and that's just because some people get confused because it comes in the same region as an OH of an alcohol and a phenol, but they are not nearly as strong or as broad. So it's worth just being able to differentiate the amine amides from the OH as well. So right now we have quite a complex overlay of the different peaks, but these are the ones you need to be able to remember, okay? Importantly, the ones in green, so the ones in this darker blue, are the and this lighter blue here, are the ones that are really key. So I will pause the video here, turn the screen off, and then try to jot down from memory a rough sketch of exactly where these functional group bond stretches happen. And once you're then happy and able to recall these, then I'd like you to try the next couple of exam questions that come up. It's all about pattern recognition and knowing exactly where those sorts of characteristic peaks come. And remember, you've always got this data sheet here to help you. So what I'd like you to do now is to just to pause the video and see if you can identify the different stretches here and the different functional groups that are responsible for those stretches. So pause the video now and have a go. Okay, so hopefully straight away, we've got this really sharp, strong signal coming in around 1700, just over. So looking at your data sheet, you should see that that is going to be a carbonyl that's responsible for that. Now, you might be looking at these peaks here and thinking, could this be an alkene? But remember, alkenes happen between 1620 and 1680. So this is 1600 here, and we're not seeing any peak there. So whilst these are sharp, they are not alkenes, so we can't assign those peaks. This peak here, though, is assignable to our CO, and it could be an alcohol, an ester, or carboxyl acid. Then we turn our attention to the other end of the spectrum, in the 3000 to 4000 range. We can see here that we don't have any broad signals. So that eliminates straight the way any carboxyl acid OHs or any OHs of an alcohol or phenol. We would expect to see those really broad along here. Now it's really important to spell this out to the examiners. You get marks for showing and explaining the absence of any peaks and how that has informed your decision. And this is often something students forget. They always say what they see, but not what they don't see. And there is credit in the mark schemes for that. Instead, we do see this peak here. This peak is a CH peak, so they're always quite sharp. Their height or their strength for the signal is always either really strong or not so strong, but they always follow the same shape. So we know that this is a CH. And obviously, you're going to see this often in organic compounds anyway. And this thing here, whilst it is slightly broad, we've said before, alcohol is really quite broad in comparison. So this is just some noise the A level. We don't need to focus in on that. Okay, so if you assigned the C double bond O and the CH there, really well done. The CO less so important because it is ambiguous down in the fingerprint region, but sometimes it can be of use. So we've got another exam question for you to be having a go at. So pause the video here and use the data sheet to see if you can work out what the organic product obtained from C was, and this is the IR of that product.
Okay, so first of all, hopefully you've noticed that all of these are alcohols. We have a tertiary, a secondary, and two primary alcohols. It's all due to the number of carbons that are on the carbon that's attached to the OH. Now, from organic chemistry, we know that obviously D cannot be oxidized because it's tertiary, but A, B, and C can be. Now, when C is treated with an oxidizing agent, such as potassium dichromate, and we're not quite sure whether the conditions were distillation or reflux, then it could be of two possible products. First product, if it underwent distillation, it would oxidize to the aldehyde. The alternative product, if it underwent vigorous oxidation conditions, such as reflux, is the carboxylic acid. The only thing that differs between these two is that we have both in both a carbonyl, but in this carboxylic acid, we're also expecting the very broad peak of an OH of a carboxylic acid. Now, if we turn our attention to the infrared spectrum, this is going to allow us to differentiate between this aldehyde and this carboxylic acid. We can see here that we've got that strong, sharp signal that is the C double bond O of a carbonyl. So that doesn't help us really satisfy which, which one's which. But then what we're looking for is this really very broad signal that we have here. Now, this is the very broad signal of an OH of a carboxylic acid. You can see here the little CH bumps that always come in pairs of a sharp signal are just found underneath here. So they're like overlaid onto the broad OH of the acid. This helps us identify that it must have undergone vigorous oxidation conditions to form this carboxylic acid. Just notice here as well, just supporting it, is we've got this CO bond between 1000 and 1300 that appears just here, which would be this CO bond here. Okay, another exam question. I want you to just pause the video here and again have a go at it. See if you can differentiate these spectras must be that for ethanol. Pause the video here and have a go. Okay, so if you chose C as the structure for ethanol, then you've got the right answer. The reason being is in this structure here, we have the C double bond O, which is a very strong, sharp signal around on this one at 1700, which matches our range here on the wave numbers. You have an absence of any very broad carboxylic acid peaks here or OH peaks for an alcohol. Instead, you've got this little, quite sharp, narrow peaks. They're the CHs. Of these bonds here and the rest of the spectrum is just fingerprint. The reason A and B can't be the ethanol IR spectrum is because whilst A does have a carbonyl peak here, really strong, you can almost see it hitting um, the lower part of the y axis, also contains this incredibly broad peak here which can only be a carboxylic acid and that makes sense because you've got a carbonyl always linked together based on that your signal at this this area here must be the co of the carboxylic acid stretch but b whilst this also has a really broad signal here it doesn't have a strong enough peak to show that you have a carbonyl here. This is too weak. Now it's really important to remember in your exam to say that there is an absence of any OH peaks in spectrum C. Many students always identify the peaks they can see, but forget to justify the peaks they can't see as eliminating different options. And that's easy marks to gain. This video has looked at infrared spectroscopy and how to use an infrared spectra to identify key stretches that link to key functional groups and enabling you to identify an organic compound. If you found the video useful, ensure that you like it and then ensure that you subscribe to the channel for new videos as and when they're uploaded.